Hey folks, believe it or not, I'm going to do, try to do some work on the Jeep tonight. Got this styrene that I uh, ordered in, all the different different tubings, and I thought I had more of this styrene sheet, but I guess I used up more than uh, I figured, so I don't know if I'm going to have enough to do what I wanted to do on both sides, because uh, I've got this fairly big piece, but I don't think it's going to be strong enough. I've got this, which is probably a would have been okay, maybe a little too thick. So this would have been the right thickness, but this is all I have. Now, I don't think I'm going to have enough here to do all the fenders, so I'm going to have to order up some more of this, some more of this sheet. But it's not going to stop me from doing one side. And I figure the best uh, way to approach this is to actually take some cardboard or something and build a template for both the front and the back out of some maybe manila tag or some uh, light cardboard and then I'll have it so I can make an exact copy on either side because this fold will go this way. I can just flip the fold around. Actually no I can't. What am I talking about? I'll have to make a separate template for each one. But no big deal. So first thing I gotta do is look through all my crap and see what I've got to uh, cut out into a template. So here's what I decided to use to make my uh, fender templates. What I'm going to do is I'll just uh, kind of cut out a strip that's going to be too thick or too wide and then I'll kind of set it up against here. This is fairly flat and then I can uh, figure out what contour I'm going to make. It's going to be even all the way and then taper in again. I think for the front or the back taper back again. The front I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to have it come out instead of having it come to a point. Well, you know what? Most of them they come down and then they roll in. And I'm trying to visualize which way would look better. I guess I got lots of this. I'll figure out the, the template first and then uh, I can try a different, few different ideas and decide which one I like the best. Okay, so I got my nice fine tip sharpie and I just gotta find my ruler. There's a ruler. Right there. I had a machinist ruler but as usual I put it somewhere and I'm not sure where it is. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my old fenders that I uh, raised up right here and I actually think I'm going to make them, I think I went a little too wide on the back. Looked a little too, a little too meaty. So these are like three and a half centimeters, 35 millimeters wide. No, just too much. So I think what I'll do is I'll measure in, let's, uh, let's make it two and a half. That now I run this around, make a mark approximately where the fold's going to be. So I'll have to kind of crease it. So measure from this edge because that's a factory edge. This is where I just kind of hack it off. It's like 15 centimeters. Look on both sides. So I just take my ruler to hold it on the line and Crease. So that'll kind of come up 
Yeah, should have put the crease a little further, but uh, can tweak it a bit. Mark the other spot. So. Set it up on there. Get an idea. How uh, the width is going to look. I think that'll look all right. And I can also use those crease points to uh, figure out where to start my taper if that's indeed what I'm going to do. And I actually think I will do a taper again. I think that would look pretty cool. And another nice thing about using this styrene is it'll. Uh, when I use uh, the styrene glue, it's it's actually a solvent cement, so I'll be able to cement it in here, and it'll uh, become one with the Jeep body. So I got my front and rear templates done, and I don't know what I was thinking. I can use them on both sides. This will go in here like so. And if you turn around, you get all this old glue off. All I gotta do is. Turn it that way, and lo and behold, it works on this side as well. So the next step is to take these two templates and transfer them over to my styrene. And another nice thing about the templates is I can kind of just position them on here, figure out the best use of this styrene, and maybe I'll be able to squeeze both fenders out. But uh, I don't know. Now you know what. This isn't even going to come close. This piece is so long. So I will, maybe I'll do two fronts and not the rear. So I know I can get two fronts out of this piece. If I stick this one in here like so, I can fit it, and then I can probably fit another one uh, in here. But. We'll see. Regard any way I look at it, I'm going to have to order some more. Now, for any of you that has never worked with styrene, it's actually quite nice to work with. I'll show you what I mean. First thing I'm going to do is trace around my template. The crusty, crusty Sharpie. I think I should use the other Sharpie. This one's not going to... Uh, this is a Sharpie pen. It's not going to uh, mark it well. There we go. I'll have to cut on the inside of this line in order to get my dimensions just right. But it's really, it's very easy stuff to work with. You don't have to cut all the way through. There we go. It's my first one marked. Like so. Now I'm going to kind of cut, try to save as much as the styrene as I can. I'm going to cut around here. And then I can sneak up on it. So I'm just going to rough cut it out. So, now what I'm going to do, instead of trying to cut, I know that's a straight line, instead of trying to cut that line with the snips, I'm just going to place my ruler on it, take a sharp knife, run it along there, don't have to worry about cutting all the way through, run it along your line, so, and then just snap it off. It follows really nice, except for where it's really thin, but uh, that's no big deal. Let's see here. Use my 
pliers and voila! Nice, nice cut. So I'll do the same for this edge here. Roll it along. All the way to the edge. Score it nice. Like so. Snaps off nice and clean. You don't use this stuff too much in the RC world unless you're doing a real project like this where you're not bolting on parts. Stuff, the styrene is used an awful lot in the uh, model train industry for scratch building. So there you go, almost done one side already. Now I'm just going to take my Lexad scissors and uh, sneak up on that. There you go. One done. You can always sand this down a little bit, but I'll worry about I'm not too worried about it because what I'm going to do once I get this fitting and even glued on is that's where this stuff comes in. Not sure which size I'll use. Once this is glued to the body, I'm going to take the styrene tube. And I don't know how the heck I'm going to do it. It's going to be tricky. But I'm going to run it along the edge so it looks like a tubular setup. So I'll probably have to kind of tack it on, heat it, bend it around, tack it. The problem with heating this stuff is it's probably going to want to really uh, distort. So maybe I'll put a piece of solid wire inside so when I bend it, it acts as a mandrel to keep it from kinking. We'll see when I get to, the, get to that point. We'll see uh, what I figure out. So I'm going to finish cutting out the other side. Mark these bends and see if I can get them glued on the body. Stay tuned. Well, there you have it. I got the front ones glued in. The glue is still drying and I uh, slopped on a fair bit of glue to uh, get them to stay. I was originally using, where did I put it here? This stuff. This uh, liquid stuff for you brush it on, but uh, it wasn't working as well because I don't have a very tight fit, so I ended up using good old-fashioned model cement because it's thicker. And anybody that's built models knows how it, how it works. Now they're pretty even; they're not 100% level, but pretty darn close. You can see this one's drooped a little bit more, but that'll fix as soon as I pull this up a bit. So. Need to let the glue set up now before I do any more. And unfortunately, here's the styrene that I was using. There just isn't enough there to uh, make this in one piece. Now I could make it in three pieces and try to stitch it together. But to be honest, this stuff bent really easy with the heat gun. I just heated it up and it held a ruler in place and actually held the ruler over the held it over top of the edge of the ruler like this, heated it up, and it pretty much just drooped right into place. It worked really well. So now i got to find some more styrene sheet. I don't plan on going to the city anytime soon, so I'm going to have to either order it, or there's a remote possibility I'll find it in town, but I kind of doubt it. Small town Alberta will have anything. We do have one store that has some craft stuff in it. I'm not holding my breath, so and being that Christmas is coming, it's not going to come very quick by order, but uh, I need to get it anyway to make my uh, uh, rocker panel uh, covers, and then I'm also going to use some of this tubing. I think what I'm going to do is I'll put the rocker panel covers on and just kind of slap that in place on the bottom and tie the two fenders together and I think that'll look uh, look pretty good but in any case I can't do any more until I get materials so that's it for this installment of the Jeep I know you guys want to see more of it and I do want to get working on it a lot more so I'm gonna get this stuff ordered up as quick as possible and uh, get some more videos up for you 
Until then, take care and talk to you later.